Pantanal wetlands of Brazil, you can find fascinating aquatic habitats throughout the year. However, it is in the wet season when you have the best chance to explore them. Alongside the highways and tracks, such as the Estrada Parque, the MS-184 highway, a dirt and gravel road which runs across part of the state of Mato Grosso do Sul, ditches, gullies, streams and pools fill with water and life. The highway includes over a hundred wooden bridges, each one crossing a stream or wider channel, and it is worth investigating the margins and shallow areas. The water in these channels may disappear completely in the dry season, and in the early and late stages of the wet season, they may only contain a little water. Furthermore, they fluctuate throughout the wet season, rising and falling depending on the rains. One day you may find a barely trickling stream, with aquatic vegetation stranded on exposed banks and tiny fish in the shallows. The next day, it may be a surging torrent of water, where you spot the golden flash of huge dorado, hunting smaller fishes in the flow. Along the banks, Ludwigia and Polygonum plant species tumble down to the water's edge. In calmer stretches of water, water lilies such as Nymphaea gardneriana and Nymphaea jamesonia often spatter the surface. You may spot popular aquarium plants, such as Echinodorus, the Amazon swords, including E. tenelum and Helanthium bolivianum, sometimes high and dry, at others partly or totally submerged. You might also encounter Hydrocotyl leucocephala. Water hyacinth, Iconia azurea, spreads down into deep water, its long stems rising up to form floating leaves and flowers above the surface. Here and there, patches of low brown Bacopa myriophylloides grip tightly to the riverbed, covered in algae. Hair grasses, Eleocaris sp, wave in the current, while the rigid tall stems of Pontidaria bend and curve with the flow. During the wet season, the sunlit clear waters support plenty of aquatic plant growth. Tapestries of Pontidaria, Echinodorus, Nymphaea and Ludwigia species flourish in the shallows. The substrate is comprised of gravels, sand, small stones and millions of snail shells. Near the highway, rubble and debris from the construction of the road fills many waterways. The sediment that builds up and collects between them allows plants to gain a toehold and establish themselves. Even where the current is strong, hair grasses thrive. number of living snails and empty shells hints at the levels of biomass. These mollusks have plenty to feed on and in turn supply food for countless fish, birds, reptiles and mammals. Even invertebrates, such as the giant water scorpion, can make a living from snails in the wet season. Water hyacinth, which has lain dormant in the silt throughout the dry season, erupts as the rains arrive, quickly recolonizing areas of the riverbed. Where the current is slow, it dominates and blocks out the light below. Where the flow is strong, only a few plants manage to hold on, relinquishing much of the habitat to algae and sturdy, defiant Bacopa myriophylloides. These aquatic plants provide vital cover to many species, including large shoals of small fish, mostly caracins, who congregate in the wet season to breed and take advantage of the glut in food and boom in habitat. 
Here, they include great numbers of Hemigrammus tridens and Sehapinus crigi and Sehapinus caliurus. Smaller groups of Moncausi bonita, Aphiocaryx anisitsi, Aphiocaryx rasbunae, and Aphiocaryx netererae, along with a smattering of Hemigrammus ulreae, also populate the shoals. The white-edged black markings found on the tails of many species seen here is a form of social mimicry, which allows them to shoal together as one, confusing predators with the mass of flicking, shifting black spots. Feeding into the larger channels, roadside ditches offer more chances to explore. Echinodorus, stranded water lilies and patches of Bacopa mirifiloides, Nachas species and Mayaka flugatilis are found at the water's edge. Below the waterline, a confusing mosaic of snail shells, twigs, branches, leaf litter and hornwort, Ceratophyllum demersum, covers the muddy substrate. Corridor's catfish dart about. Stands of Helanthium bolivianum clamber up the bank and out of the water. This is the place to spot small cichlids such as Cichlosoma dimulus, sheltering under the roots and stems of marginal vegetation. Here too is where to search for Epistogramma combrae and the pike cichlid, Crenocicla lepidota. These shallows are a favourite haunt of groups of bright red serpe tetras, Hyphosobraconeches, who shoal together with other small caracins. small acrylic tank, one is able to examine more closely some of the tiny gems found in this habitat. While the great rivers and lakes may attract many scientists, for me it is the ditches, pools and tiny streams where treasure is to be found. There's uh, Aphiocaryx nitsai, Aphiocaryx rathbunai, Munchausia, um, D something. Decora, Decora, and another species I can't identify, and loads of snails.